The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Tonight is our next to last chance to tell you about Gildy's Blade, the sensational knife spatula that you can get through parquet margarine at a sensational saving. Have paper and pencil ready for our next announcement. In the meantime, remember, parquet is the margarine that always tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Get some tomorrow. Well, it's a bright April morning in Summerfield. Out of the great Gildersleeve's house, there's a pleasant hum of springtime activity. Bertie's washing clothes. Marjorie's cleaning up her room. Leroy's cleaning up his room. All the little wheels busily turning. And the big wheel? Well, he's rolling around keeping an eye on things. Yes, sir, everybody happily at work. What a great little family. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Beautiful day. By George, I'll bet if I opened this window, I could see a robin down in the backyard. Hello, Mr. Gildy! Huh? Oh, hello. <laughs> the magic of spring. A birdie carrying a laundry basket. <laughs> Wonder how the children are getting along. Marjorie! In here, Uncle Mort. Come on in. Well, cleaning up your little room, are you? Just straightening things around. Well, good. Yeah. Hmm, smells nice. Bet you got some new perfume. No, I'm moth-proofing the closet. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasant, though. You know, my dear, you've made your room quite attractive. Well, thank you, Unky. Ruffled skirt on the dressing table, little skirts on the lampshades. Nice for a girl. It's a lovely room. I'm going to miss it when I leave. When you leave? Well, after Bronco and I are married. It won't be long, Unky, the 10th of May. We're going to find a little apartment. 10th of May. <laughs> a little over a month. It seems like a dream. Yeah, certainly does. You know, my dear, simply because you're being married doesn't mean you have to go away. You and Bronco are perfectly welcome to stay here. Oh, I know, Unky. In fact, you can have this very room, Marjorie. Of course, Bronco might object to some of the ruffles, but that's easily fixed. <laughs> You could have a skirt on one lamp and trousers on the other. <laughs> His and hers. Yeah. You're sweet, Uncle Mort, but there just isn't room enough in here for two people. Now, wait, my dear. Well, look at this closet. There's barely room for my clothes. Where would I put Bronco's wardrobe? Well, from what I've seen of Bronco's wardrobe, he wears it during the day and kicks it under the dresser at night. <laughs> And you could manage, couldn't you, for a while? No, Uncle Mort, the room just isn't large enough. You don't feel badly about me leaving, do you? Oh, no. I have to go, Unky. I'm meeting Bronco. He'll be for, here for dinner tonight. Yeah, fine. I don't know why she's worried about having room up here for Bronco. He's always at the dinner table. <laughs> hey, Unc! Uh, yes, Leroy, what is it? Will you come in and help me catch Elmer? What's this? Elmer, my pet turtle. He's under the bed and I can't get him out. Well, leave him there and get the rest of this room straightened up, young man. Look at this mess. Everything on the floor. How do you walk through it? I step over it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, let's get these clothes off the floor, Leroy. Hang things up. Where am I going to hang them? The hooks in my closet are loaded. Well, there must be some place besides the middle of the floor. Under the bed? No. <laughs> hey, I've got an idea, Unc. When Marge gets married, I can have her room. Marjorie's room? Sure, and then Elmer can have this one. <laughs> Elmer, is that all it means to you, Leroy, your sister getting married and leaving us, that you can have a room for that turtle? Well... Wait a minute. Your room and Marjorie's are adjoining. I could take out part of the wall. Which wall? Between the rooms. Certainly, I could make a dandy apartment out of it. For me and Elmer? Yeah. <laughs> for Bronco and Marjorie. Aww. That would give them plenty of room, Leroy. They can have their own apartment right here in the house with us. 
By George, that's the answer. Yeah, but what about me? I'm getting robbed. You're not getting robbed, my boy. You can have the den downstairs for your room. No kidding? No kidding. Gee, that'll be keen, right next to the kitchen. I can almost lean out of bed and open the icebox. <laughs> <laughs> the rates are growing up, Leroy. You can lean out of bed and open the garage doors. <laughs> Good morning, Bessie Oh, good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve What's the matter, Bessie? Weren't you expecting me? Well, I was expecting somebody Must have been you Oh, my goodness (laughs) I'm a little late this morning, Bessie Anything happen in the office? No, sir Any mail? No, sir Any calls? No, sir Didn't anything happen? I don't know, I just got here Yep (laughs) Bessie I guess we were both late, weren't we? Yes, yes. I have a very important job to do this morning, Bessie. Get me a big piece of paper and sharpen a couple of pencils. Yes, sir. Here's some paper. Fine. I'll sharpen a pencil for you. Now you're clicking. Bessie. Bessie. Bessie? Yes, sir? Give me that pencil. Or what's left of it. Yes, sir. (sighs) An eraser with a lead on it. Are you going to write something, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, I'm going to draw some plans, Bessie. I'm going to convert two of our upstairs bedrooms into a little apartment. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Well, now that Marjorie's getting married, a little apartment is all you need. Yeah. Bessie, the little apartment is for Marjorie and Bronco. <laughs> You're probably too young to understand, Bessie, but a man likes to keep his little family together as long as he can. I understand. I think (laughs) Let's see, I'll draw this out here By George, when Bronco and Marjorie see how I'm going to fix up those rooms They'll never think of leaving Now this square is Marjorie's room And this square is Leroy's room It's going to be pretty dark in there Huh? No windows Well, yes, but No door either Oh, I give up (laughs) Quite a problem, isn't it? Never mind, Bessie, I'm going out Yes, sir Any place in particular? If you must know, I'm going out to the pumping plant to see old Uncle Charlie Anderson. I need a carpenter on this job, and he's a jack of all trades. See you later, Bessie. Bye. If his name is Charlie Anderson, I wonder why they call him Jack. Uncle Charlie will do this for me. Sure he will. He likes Marjorie. Likes me, too. You've just never done anything to show it. Uh, Charlie! What do you want? Come outside a minute, Charlie. I'd like to talk to you. I ain't got time. Oh, time. I'm sitting over there on a box chewing on a nail. <laughs> hey, Charlie! Ah, oh, quit your belly. I'm coming. Thought I'd come out and see you, Charlie. Our thing's in the pumping plant. I keep it a-going. So I see. <laughs> the pump looks fine. It's falling apart. Needs a new snifter valve. When are you going to get a new snifter valve, Gildersleeve? Well, I'll order one the first thing in the morning. Come on outside, Charlie. What I really came to talk to you about, Uncle Charlie, you're a carpenter, aren't you? Well, that's a silly question. Well, are you? Said I was, didn't I? Oh, brother. <laughs> What do you want carpentered? Well, you know, Marjorie and Bronco Thompson are getting married. What do they want a carpenter for? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, Charlie. I want you to make two of our upstairs bedrooms into an apartment for Marjorie and Bronco. Sort of an inducement to keep them at home. You gonna be in the house, too? Certainly. It'll take something to keep them there. <laughs> when do you want a did? What? I said, when do you want a did? Right away. Today? D- just as soon as you can get to it, Charlie. They're being married the 10th of May. All right, I'll get over there first of the week. Fine. Good old Charlie. Anything else? No, that's all. All right, then. Go on and beat it. I don't allow no loafers around the pumping plant. Loafers? Now, just a minute. I am the water commissioner. Water commissioner? Worst kind of a loafer. Charlie! <laughs> Mr. 
Miss Gillsley! Miss Gillsley! Yeah, I'm coming, Bertie. Dinner's all on the table. Fine. Marjorie and Bronco here? Yes, sir. Everybody's at the table. Good. Leroy and I have a surprise for him. I think you'll be happy to know, Bertie, that I'm going to fix the rooms upstairs so Marjorie and Bronco can live with us after they're married. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. We have to keep our little family together, Bertie. Well, good evening, children. Hello, Anki. Oh, good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Bronco. Don't get up. <laughs> How are you this evening, Mr. Gildersleeve? Fine. I don't think we can shake hands the full length of the table, can we? Oop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Made it. <laughs> Brother, what an arm. <laughs> uh, how's everything, Unc? Eh? What's that, my boy? You know. Oh, oh yes. Fine, fine. <laughs> I'm glad you're with us this evening, Bronco. Well, it's always a pleasure to be in your house, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, glad to hear it. Go ahead, Unc. Spring it. Yeah. Just eat your pineapple and cottage cheese, Leroy. I'll take care of this. What's going on, Unc? Uh, going on? Well, uh, as I said, I'm glad that you and Bronco are having dinner with us tonight. I have a little news for you. News? News? Yeah, news. <laughs> you know, Bronco, I think a great deal of Marjorie and a great deal of you, too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I mean, <laughs> and though I'm very happy that you two are going to be married, the thought of losing Marjorie has caused me considerable sadness. But, Anki... Now wait, my dear. Yeah, keep your shirt on. Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll come to the point. Since it would cost you two quite a bit to go out and rent an apartment... I worked out a little arrangement. I'm converting Leroy and Marjorie's rooms into an apartment upstairs so that after you're married, you can move in here and we'll all be together. Now, what do you think of that? Well, what do you think? Gee, don't just sit there. Marjorie? Bronco? Uncle Mort, it's very kind of you, Mr. Gildersleeve, we're grateful to you, but we can't accept your offer. You can't accept... Oh, for corn's sake. We have to have a place of our own, Unky. But Marjorie... We have to be independent, Mr. Gildersleeve. We're not going to sponge off our relatives. You won't be sponging. I want you here. I'm sorry, Unky. We have to stand on our own feet, Mr. Gildersleeve. All right. Excuse me, children. Yeah, excuse me, too. Come on, Unk. Let's sit on the front steps. <laughs> Too bad, Unc. That Bronco, stubborn kid. Well, I'm not licked yet. That's the stuff. Has to stand on his two feet, does he? Well, by George, I'll stand on mine, too. My feet are just as big as his. <laughs> you said it, Unc. Leroy. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again very shortly. This is the next to last time we can tell you on this program about Gildy's Blade, the sensational knife spatula made by Kalan and offered you as a sensational bargain by Parquet Margarine. Thousands have already sent in for this unique kitchen implement. We urge you to get your order in before it's too late. The number of Gildy's Blades available is limited. So is the time. So listen carefully. Act promptly. Don't be disappointed. Gildy's Blade is unlike anything you can get anywhere else. Think of it, it's more than a knife, more than a spatula. It's both. A fine kitchen knife and an all-purpose spatula all in one handle. One side of the wide, springy 7-inch blade has a lifetime serrated edge for slicing bread, cake, fruits, vegetables. The other side has a hand-honed, razor-keen straight edge for all kinds of cutting. The whole blade is spatula-shaped for mixing, turning, scraping. Overall length is just under a foot, counting the polished imported rosewood handle. Now, you would expect to pay $2 for an implement like this in any store, but Parquet is offering Gildy's Blade to you for only 50 cents, plus the label or wrapper from any loaf of bread you buy at your grocer's and the red end flap from a package of Parquet margarine. Be sure, of course, to include your own name and address. Now, merely send your half dollar, your bread wrapper or label, and your Parquet end flap to Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77, Illinois. That's Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77, Illinois. Remember, this offer is for a limited time only. 
Send for Gildy's Blade tomorrow. Well, the great Gildersleeve had it all figured out that Marjorie and Bronco could live at his house after they are married. Only one small hitch developed. Marjorie and Bronco didn't like the idea. This was quite a blow to the great man, but he doesn't give up easily. This morning, he's taking his problem to his old friend, Judge Hooker. Yeah, the judge should be up by this time. Probably paddling around the bedroom on his rowing machine. Uh, always hate to push this bell. Seems like a signal for the roof to fall in. <laughs> The judge wasn't up before. I'll bet he is now. Well, Gilday. Hello, Judge. <laughs> you ought to oil that up sometime. <laughs> Hope I didn't awaken you. No, indeed, old friend. I was just having my breakfast. Won't you come in and share my table? Oh, yeah, thank you. What are we having for breakfast, Judge? A very healthful menu, Gilday. Uh-huh. Rye toast, a coddled egg, and a bottle of Kalac water. <laughs> you know, Judge, I think I've already eaten Well, you can sit down with me at any rate What brings you to my lodgings this fine morning? Well, I have a little problem, Horace Oh? Huh? I want Marjorie and Bronco to live at my house after they're married I'm even making a nice little apartment for them but They just can't see it Well, you know how young married couples are Well, I'm offering them free rent and free meals Believe me, with Bronco's appetite, that's a pretty big offer. I know how you feel, Gilde. I'm even going to furnish the apartment for him, Judge. I'm going to buy Marjorie a cedar chest and new rugs. They couldn't find a nicer apartment anyplace. Besides, it's good for Leroy to have Marjorie around. I agree, Gilde. But on the other hand, it's quite commendable that two young people desire to make their own way in the world. That's the kind of determination that built our country. That was the spirit of 76. After Bronco pays the bills for a few months, he'll look like the spirit of 76. Now, now, Gilda. Judge, I don't want Marjorie to go away from us. What'll the house be like without her? Not coming down to breakfast in the morning? Not there when I come home at night? Well, it's just one of those things. This is the time when you must think of Marjorie. You want her to be happy, don't you? Of course I do. Then there's only one thing for you to do. Will you take my advice? Mm, well, all right You go back to Bronco and Marjorie and help them find an apartment What? Try to forget your own loss, Gildy, and pitch in Give them your fullest cooperation Well, I guess there's nothing else to do Of course there isn't So simply make the best of it Now, cheer up Put a smile on your face Yeah Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, you can do better than that Big smile Spread your mouth Tilt your corners. <laughs> Tilt my corners? Remember, Gildy, a twinkling eye and a happy countenance are the brooms that sweep the clouds from life's blue sky. <laughs> <laughs> that did it, Judge. I'll take my brooms and go home. <laughs> Oh, Bertie. Oh, I didn't see you coming in the back door. How'd you come along, Miss Gilsey? I don't know, Bertie. Looks like the children are going to leave us. Well, don't you worry about Miss Marjorie and Mr. Bronco. If it's to be that they're going to be here, then they're going to be here. If it ain't to be, then they ain't going to be here. <laughs> that's right, Bertie. No need to feel bad, Mr. Gilsey, because that's the way it's going to be. Yes, Bertie. Or that's the way it's, it ain't going to be. Yeah. All right, Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, you know how it ain't going to be if it ain't to be? Yes, Bertie. <laughs> that's right. They ain't going to be here. <laughs> that, Bertie uh, I saw Bronco's car in front He and Marjorie are probably in the parlor Hello, anybody home? Oh, it's Unky Yeah Oh, come on in, Mr. Gildersleeve uh, Marge and I were just talking Yeah, now, Bronco You don't have to sit on the newspaper I know you and Marjorie were looking for apartment ads Let's let bygones be bygones Maybe I can help you you, Unky? Sure, why not? I'm a good ad reader. 
What have you found? Oh, you're swell, Mr. Gildersleeve. Isn't he wonderful, Bronco? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, we found one ad here that sounds great. You did? Yeah, listen to this. Uh, furnished apartment, three sunny rooms, modern, immaculately clean, $65 a month. Well, that's not bad. Of course, $65 a month is a lot of money. We can't find anything for less, Uncle Moore. Well, if you didn't have to pay any rent, you could save the $65. Someday buy a little house. Mr. Gildersleeve Unky I'm not trying to talk you out of it Oh, indeed <laughs> Where is this uh, apartment located? It's at the corner of Pittman and Cherry Streets Pittman and Cherry Not a very good neighborhood It isn't? Right next door to the tack factory Oh Of course it's all right If you don't mind a few tacks flying around <laughs> No, I guess that'd be out Yes, I guess it would Now don't be discouraged You've just begun Takes a heap of looking to find a place to live. Uh, well, guess I'll go upstairs and take a little nap. Oh, Bronco, why don't we go over and look at that apartment on Green Street? Mm, yeah, that might be an idea. Let's go. What's this? You gonna see an apartment? Yes, we saw a sign on a place on Green Street. Oh, good. Why don't the three of us go over? Well, I thought you were going to take a nap, Unky. Nap? No. <laughs> Let's go see the apartment. <laughs> Say, this is nice, Marge. Look at the view from the breakfast room. Oh, it's lovely. Well, it's nice now, but they might put a building right next door. I've heard rumors of a tuna fish cannery coming to town. <laughs> but the rest of the apartment is nice. Mm, it looks clean. What's that on the ceiling? A bug? Bug? Well, don't pay any attention to a little bug, my dear. Matches the wallpaper. <laughs> the apartment could be made very attractive. I don't think I like it. You don't? I mean, you don't? Oh, come on, Marge. Let's go. Don't give up, children. Sometimes you have to look at hundreds of places. Remember, faint heart near one fine apartment. <laughs> Love that bug. <laughs> Hello, TV. Gildersleeve? <laughs> what can I do for you this afternoon? Well, you can give me a Coke, Peavy, with just a sprinkling of ice. Mm, all right. You seem to be in pretty good spirits this afternoon. You said it. Things are looking up, Peavy. That's rather surprising. I heard you had a little set to with Marjorie and Bronco about where they were going to live. No, nah, it was nothing at all. It was simply a quiet family discussion. No. Oh. I feel that when a young couple gets married, they should make their own choice in such matters. Of course, if they want to live in the bride's home, that's perfectly all right, too. Don't you think so, Peavy? Mm, I don't know. I never tried it. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't Mrs. Peavy want you to live at her house when you were first married? Yes, she did. Well? It was quite a strange thing. The day before we were to move in with her folks, a cat got under the house and we had to find another place. A cat? A pole cat. Yeah. <laughs> pole cat, eh? What an odd coincidence. Yes. <laughs> I had to bury my clothes, but it was worth it. TV? Of course, that was a long time ago. Yes. Well, it's not easy to see your little girl move out, Peavy. But by George, I'm keeping strictly hands off. Say, isn't that Bronco's car going down the street? What? Had Marjorie with him. But they're going to look for an apartment. Which way did they go, Peavy? They went that way. Over. <laughs> See you later, hop along, Peavy. <laughs> this must be where they stopped. That's Bronco's car. Ooh, darned apartment houses. A dozen doors down the hall. I wonder which one they went in. Nobody's there. Sounds hollow. <laughs> A guy could get into trouble this way. I'll try this one. The water meters are in the basement, Commissioner. <laughs> Fresh housewife. I'll try this one. Madam, I'm not reading Marjorie. Oh, Unky, how'd you get here? Oh, just happened to be going by. Saw Bronco's car. <laughs> 
find an apartment, did you? Yes, we found one, Unky. You have? Come on in. It's adorable. It is? Uh-huh. Bronco's over with the manager signing the lease. Oh. Isn't it pretty, Uncle Mort? Look at the view. Yeah, nice view. Aren't you happy, Unky? Sure, I'm very happy. I think this will be very nice for you children. Oh, I think I'll like it. Of course you'll like it. After a while, it'll be home, do you? I guess so. Well, I think I better go, Marjorie. Nothing more I can do. Oh, Unky. Well... Oh, here's Bronco. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, Bronco, congratulations. No congratulations, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm angry. What's the matter? Mr. Gildersleeve, can Marge and I have the apartment at your house if I pay rent for it? What? Why, sure. Well, what happened, Bronco? That manager. He gave me the lease to sign and I read it. And you know what it said down in the fine print? No children allowed in this building. <laughs> I threw it right in his face. <laughs> children? Good for you, Bronco. By George, there's no rule against children at my house. Come on, children, let's go home. Yeah. The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Once again, here's how you send for Gildy's Blade, the unique knife spatula that's two fine kitchen knives and an all-purpose kitchen spatula all in one. Send 50 cents, the label or wrapper from a loaf of bread, and the red end flap of a package of parquet margarine to Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77. That's Box 5939, Chicago 77. Don't miss this bargain. Act at once. Send for Gildy's Blade tomorrow. Uh, lovely racket. Good old Uncle Charlie. Upstairs, working on the apartment. <laughs> yes, sir, this house is a regular beehive. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, too, Bertie. Hi, uh, George, there's nothing like having all the family together. Yes, indeed. Well, I guess I'll go in the den and relax before dinner. You can't go in the den. Leroy's moving all his stuff in there. Oh? Well, go upstairs to my room. Can't use your room, Mr. Gillsleeve. Uncle Charlie's got his machinery in there. Machinery, huh? All right, I'll use the living room couch. Miss Marjorie's got all her clothes spread out on the couch. Bertie, what's in the basement? Laundry. La <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, guess I'll go out and sit in the car. Uh, uh, but it's nice to have the family all together. Huh, Bertie? Good night, folks. Yeah. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Gloria Holliday, Cliff Arquette, Dick Crenna, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is Jay Stewart saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Which suits your taste? Mustard that's mild, delicately spiced, or sharp, snappy mustard with zing in every bite? Either way, you like Kraft prepared mustard. For there are two kinds, salad mustard, tangy but smooth, and Kraft prepared mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. Either works magic in bringing out hidden flavor. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft prepared mustard. Next, join the excitement of Break the Bank on NBC.